everyone, good afternoon and welcome to the social media and disinformation breakout session. I am Chris Masoliven or Kay, just call me Kay, and I will be moderating the discussion for today. So this discussion is meant to be uh, an intimate gathering where kayong mga youth leaders, tayong mga kabataan, we can directly engage, speak, ask questions with our panelists and speakers for today. So ang discussion natin ngayong hapon will be recorded, streamed, and promoted after the summit. So since meron tayong four simultaneous breakout sessions, um, hindi natin siya pwedeng i-live live stream ng sabay-sabay, pero pwedeng pwede pa rin nating i-stream at i-share sa public after nitong session natin. Before we start, I would like to um, introduce our speakers. Um, first, we have... Um, Mr. Voltaire Tupast um, from Life Solutions Incorporated. He is the co-founder and president of the multimedia production startup Life Solutions Incorporated. So some of their products is the Fight uh, series. Uh, in 2018, he co-founded Fight, a community-oriented independent media outfit alongside Atom Araulio, Rupert Ambil, and Zach Yuson, and currently acts as chief content officer okay joining voltaire is mr roby alampay founder and chairman of puma public productions former editor-in-chief of business world and a former news anchor currently roby is the anchor of big the big story and co-anchor of the chiefs on signal tv's one news channel he is an award-winning journalist a product of the journalism programs of up and columbia university and he and the founder and chairman of Puma Podcast. He was formerly editor-in-chief of the Philippines' oldest and biggest business newspaper, Business World, and the founding editor of Interaction. He was uh, an awardee of 10 Outstanding Young Men in 2009 and an Asia Society Young Leader Fellow in 2006. Um, joining us also, I think he's just having a hard time connecting, but um, he'll join us in a minute is Mr. Ibrahim Ibarasul Bernardo, the Philippine country representative for the Digital Literacy Steering Committee on Facebook. Iba is currently the Chief Immersive Officer of IM Cardboard PH, an end-to-end -end virtual reality solutions provider and the Philippine rep country representative to the Steering Committee on Digital Literacy. Hello yep. po sa ating tatlo uh, speakers this afternoon. Oh, I right. am okay. in can we spotlight our three speakers? Hey, they're already pinned, but I'm not okay, sure. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon. Um, this session is really meant to get your thoughts on our the big the big words of social media and disinformation. But before that, I would like to ask you to briefly share about your work, what you have been doing, what you're currently doing, ano yung mga initiatives that you have been involved in the past, para rin mag-get to know kayo ng ating mga participants on a personal level and para ma-inspire sila sa inyong background. Um, I'll start with Robbie. Robbie? Um, hello. Uh, magandang tanghali sa kanyang lahat. Ako si Robbie Alampay. Uh, gaya ng nabanggit. Teka, paltang ko lang yung pangalan ko ha, para lang nakita niya. This is so, pinaltang ko lang para lang in a nutshell you see what I'm currently doing. Um, I, I anchor uh, the news, the big story on cable sa uh, one news channel ng Signal TV. I also co-anchor the Chiefs also on one news. And then outside of that, I am um, uh, currently, I'm, I'm the founder and the chairman of Puma Public Productions. We do podcasts um, our, our, our flagship brand is uh, Puma Podcast. Uh, I guess that's self-explanatory. We do podcasts specifically using, uh, no, with, with journalism um, at the core of what we, of what we do. Um, so you can find Puma Podcast on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcast, wherever you podcast. Um, we're on Facebook also and Twitter. Please do follow us also. We have a lot of things, but very quickly lang relevant to to this session, the reason that you know I, I started my career in print, I dabbled in in broadcasting, I set up online digital uh, media, 
the reason I got into podcast is apart from being a fan of radio features from matagal na matagal na estudyante pa ako, I was listening to radio features, um, is because sa audio, uh, for those of you who listen to podcasts, even the way you interact with audio, it's it's insulated from all the toxicity on social media right now. Uh, it's also a very different experience because you're not constantly being bombarded with, oh, click on this link, oh, subukan mo to, and so on. No. When you listen to podcasts, you, you click play, and then you are actually a passive listener. You allow a trusted source, hopefully, to, to tell you a story or to give you something, and you're not constantly distracted. So it's just a, a very much more pleasant space, and I think a powerful space um, to talk about things, and particularly to combat, combat this information, precisely because you, you isolate yourself from all the noise that you're constantly surrounded and bombarded with. So, dun mo nai sa akin. Wow. Thank you, Robbie. Actually, Youth Led has um, a series of uh, podcasts in partnership with Puma Podcast. Um, pwede kinyong pakinggan yung bago ang lahat. It's the stories of the youth of our nation's leaders. So, we released five episodes and pwede kinyong pakinggan in any music or streaming platform that you use. Thank you, Robbie. Um, how about um, Iba? Iba, are you here na? Can you yep, make yep. clear about your work? Uh, so that's probably the most difficult question. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll put it into three buckets. Uh, one, I love motorcycles. Two, uh, I'm a big geek. Uh, I love technology and science fiction. And, and, and three, I like helping people out. So I'm lucky in that I've been able to use those three uh, passions of mine to bring impact. Um, started out with being a solar energy foundation ambassador. And I rode around the country 19 days uh, from Apari to Sambuanga, Sibugay to off-grid communities. And, and we brought solar energy. And during those 19 days, uh, being a geek and being a big sci-fi fan, once you bring them electricity, what's next, right? And then I started a social enterprise called Sari Software. And we started making apps for these nanas because those were the heart of every community, these Sari Sari stores. No? And fast forward to today, um, you can see that my background is a Sari Sari store. Uh, we're in 110,000 Sari Sari stores. We're helping nanas uh, with understand their business, with financial literacy, like uh, Henry said earlier, which is a big uh, thrust, and um, grow their business. So I kind of stumbled upon the digital impact space, which is also why I set up a virtual reality company, because I thought, hey, uh, this is a great way to educate. Like Robbie said about podcasts, I think VR is a way you can be have an intimate uh, connection with someone and, and, and educate them. So we work with museums, the Ayala Museum, and create historical virtual reality experiences to educate. So that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so it's basically bringing technology uh, and making it accessible. And that's how I ended up uh, in the Facebook Digital Literacy Steering Committee. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, it, it just goes to show that you can come from a different, a whole different background and still um, do advocacy at the end of the day. I like that you're, uh, you're using technology to empower more people. How about you, Voltaire? Hello. Um, I'm Voltaire. I'm now based in Leyte. I've been here for more than a year na since the pandemic um, started. Um, I ako muna sa aming probinsya. On the sidelines, I'm doing farming. I'm a weekend farmer. Um, still present with my vocacies. Um, at fight, um, our themes include, our stories include. He got disconnected. Oh, I think he got disconnected. 
Okay, I think he's having a hard time connecting, but it's still here, sir. Anyway, we can. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I'm here. I'm back. Go ahead, Walter. Sorry, I'm going to the video because I'm not late. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Um, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and we build communities, mainly young people. So I'm looking forward to um, discussing with you some of our tips and insights on content creation, how to change narratives in the context of the digital age. All right. Okay. Um, thank you for the three of you for sharing about who you are and um, ano yung past work. Nyo. Some participants have also shared Um, saan sila galing? Meron tayong mga taga Marintuque, Caraga, um, Calabarso, Naga. Ayan. So it's great to hear na we are represented across the country. Okay. So um, for today's discussion, mostly magpakwentuhan lang tayo. And the participants, please feel free to raise your hand if you wanted to ask question or use the chat box and I'll ask it to our three speakers because this intends to bridge that gap na wala tayong masyad na kausap na speakers. Ayan, nandito sila ang ating mga experts sa industry ng uh, social media and disinformation. Um, maybe as a first question, I wanted to ask um, your thoughts on ano ba sa tingin nyo, bakit kabataan ang dapat nating ilagay sa front lines ng disinformation phenomenon sa social media? Aside from the fact that they are the primary users of social media, ano ba yung sobrang crucial na role ng kabataan amidst the big narratives, the dominant narratives that just keep on clashing each other? Um, maybe I'll start first with um, Voltaire para balik tad. Yeah. Um, well, siguro let's start with figures. Ano kung gaano kalaki yung mga kabataan, yung population ng mga kabataan sa Pilipinas? Uh, mga, let's say, 15 Recording to 24 in progress. years old na mga batan. They are millennials. Um, as of January 2020, almost 19.8 um, million yung kanilang population. Malaking bilang yan. And they are very engaged um, online. Um, last year, for instance, more than 6% ng mga kabataan, ay, ng, ng Facebook users, ay galing sa hanay ng mga kabataan. 18 to 34 yung age group na yan. Malaki yan. And then, um, over 53% of the country's young people access the internet through mobile phones. So, ilan lang yan sa mga, sa mga behavior ano, um, ng mga kabataan online and their access to the internet and to gadgets. So, it's a potential force um, to record with na pwedeng i-harness natin para maging Uh, bahagi sila ng efforts to effect change. At Fight, for instance, um, we would like to highlight yung courage in stories. So, ito ay karakteristik ng mga kabataan. Both, they are very bold. Um, lahat tayo nang, nang galing sa ganong sector. Uh, idealistic. And very um, very creative. Yun yung, I think, magandang aspect ng hanin ng mga kabataan. And they are very specific content creators. So I think mas maganda kung yung mga values na natutunan natin as journalists, as content creators, responsible content creators, ay uh, magsilbing gabay sa kanilang pag-create ng content online. Audio man, video, um, text. Um, dahil sa panahon ngayon na uh, laganap yung disinformation, ay uh, medyo nakakalito nga. Di ba? Ang daming mga marites. At yung karamihan dyan ay nagiging disinformation. So I think we start with their capacity to cite, um, uh, to look, to find what's, what disinformation is um, and also to help them build, con create content um, dahil naniniwala, naniniwala ko na yung mga leaders ngayon, young leaders ngayon ay dapat um, content creators then They are good storytellers. Youth leaders should be good storytellers. What, what a great way to put it, no? We all are content creators in the social media metaverse, sabi yan ng Facebook. And isa yun sa mga pwede nating i-harness. And given the numbers, the numbers speak for itself. Marami talagang kabataan. And tayo yung primary users, di ba? How about you, um, Iba? 
Okay. Um, the if you look at the, the panel here, we're all digital titos, right? Kami uh, ni Robbie, lumake kami na apat lang yung television station. Uh, kami yung remote control kasi kami yung inuutusan. May aerial pa. So, yung kabataan, they're digital natives, right? They grew up with this technology. They understand it better than we do. Um, the challenge is we need their help to educate digital titos like us. Robbie, he's, he's a professional. He's a, 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 he's, he's a professional journalist. He got educated in verifying information and getting the right sources. He went to school for that. Yung kabataan, they live and breathe it, right? They know when something is fake news. So we need the youth's help, the digital natives, the people who grew up with all of this information to reach out to other titos like us <laughs> and educate us. But don't be too judgmental. Be patient, kids. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh. Um, millennial na ako millennial. Eh. So yung Gen Z, and you know, I, I get uh, surprised me since sa mga lumilitaw na apps that I, I feel like a tita na kahit digital native ako kasi there are so many apps sprouting and you know itong yung mga youth diyan tayo lagi nagpapaturo so be patient nga naman with teaching our ano our family our friends especially because um i saw a recent statistic na mas madalas mabiktima ng um, fake news ang mga older generation so dun pa lang marami ng opportunities to engage with uh, the people within our community Robbie, as someone working in a very objective, uh, truth-based um, industry. Uh, okay, maraming salamat. First, tama si Iba, no? Parang, you know, we are, in a way, our generation are, are we, we not only grew up in, in old media, we also grew up with a, an older regime and a particular influence of journalism which is really has been na iba na ngayon eh hindi na talaga ano um, we would like to think na yung kabataan ngayon they know how to sift through uh, truth um, and disinformation but unfortunately latest studies also show diba you've seen the PISA surveys which show na particularly sa mga mas bata pa sa inyo no mas bata pa sa inyo mga nasa grade school they cannot distinguish between news and opinion. No? So that's a real problem. Uh, but I'd like to focus on, on, on the importance of the youth. No? Um, the, nabanggit kanina ni Voltaire, no? uh, more than 50% of the people on social media uh, ay kabataan. That overlaps almost 100% with the fact also that about 52% of our voters in 2022 are also youth no so it's not just your knowledge that's being uh, coveted and valued it's also your demographic that's being targeted kasi kay mga botante uh, and so when we say that you are the agents of change nothing can be more literal than that than realizing nga nga pala kayo yung boboto second thing is um, so so you will need to know and you will need to have foundations also for journalism and news and understanding at the very least anong news anong opinion um, and how do i how do i distinguish and how do i fight this information second nabanggit then you need to be able to fight this information uh, because tama yung nasabi kayo yung ano eh, you are the ones who are actually equipped because of a particular mindset people say um, ang kawawa ang kabataan ngayon because if they look at information and news online, it's hard to tell what to believe and therefore they may end up believing everything. My mindset there is no. Actually, because this generation is taught not to believe anything, that may actually be uh, your advantage. Kasi kami, we grew up with, pagka nakita mo sa dyaryo, totoo yan, di ba? If that expression of it's in black and white, Diba? That literally came from our generation. Because black and white, yung tinitignan namin na dyaryo. 
and so you it it came with the mindset na pagka nasabi yan ng media di ibig sabihin to na yan kayo baliktad di ba kahit makita mo kahit mabasa mo in fact the technology is now at the point na kahit nakita mo yung video ng tao na nagsasalita di ba nasanay na kayo na hindi hindi ako basta-basta maniniwala di ba and that's an important skill and that's an important value actually it makes for a resilient an information resilient generation and we have a chance to make you information resilient and information wise finally we need you because kaya na sabi ni ni iba and it just just pointed out sa totoo lang naman uh, you know people don't give you enough credit um, for being um, wise and people give too much credit for the older generation when in fact all the studies show na titos and titas and lolos and lolas and your dads and moms sila talaga ang vulnerable to to fake news eh di ba sila na alam naman natin lahat sila yung post ng post sa Viber groups natin sila yung kung ano-anong ginalagay sa ano natin uh, so that's why it's important and that's why ako personally I'm very happy to be in this session Thanks, Robbie. Um, with what you, you guys said, it, I'm reminded of the quote na parang being silent about this information means that you support it because you're not doing anything about it. So, meron talagang, mahalaga talaga yung role natin ng kabataan kasi tayo yung nakakapag-navigate ng technology. Yun yung pinakamalaking gap between the, the youth and the older generations. It's because they're bombarded with too much technology na mas nahihirapan silang mag-assess which is a genuine news which is um which is a fact um kasi ngayon medyo may approach tayo na nagiging person based yung belief natin ng kung ano yung tama at kung ano yung totoo i wanted also to read some of the insights from our participants yan dapat ang gawin ng youth maging content creator sila to motivate others um i agree Um, tayo na yung may hawak nung ano, content is king, sabi nga nila. So maybe we can better use it to further um, our advocacies, the issues that matter most to you. Sabi naman ni Ryan Oliver, it's about ideology. Ideology is a very powerful tool. Young generation have absor- absorptive and idealistic minds which can be either manipulated for bad things or utilized for good things. I agree, ideology is the tool of Left-leaning groups, we have to fight bad ideo- ideologies or extreme ones. Okay. Some of the youth ngayon may mga hindi magandang content. It's a double-edged sword, no? Because social media is not as regulated um, as we want it to be. It's a free-roaming world for all of us. So, ang hirap din mag-guard against good and bad content. Okay. So, marami ding factors na some influencers... Um, have a fear of losing f- followers because of the content. So um, from what I understand, no, and the initial results of the survey that we shared with the youth leaders yesterday, tell us na some most youth leaders um, do not post um, individualized statements on some pressing issues. They would rather support issue-based campaigns. So, merong hesitancy yung mga youth ngayon across the country na mag-share ng kanilang personal opinion, mag-comment sa isang very political post, or mag-engage na they represent themselves. So, what they do, they usually just share social media posts, support um, support campaigns in a passive manner. Okay. How do you think po, um, can we encourage more youth to be I would say more vocal, more active in this space. I think that's the dilemma of um, many youth today. Eh? Kasi like what you guys said kanina, dumaan din naman kayo sa generation na hindi din kayo pinapakinggan, hindi rin kayo um, nire-respeto. Pero given all these um, tools that we have now, um, why do you think the youth should create content and should be more active in posting about social issues? Um, anyone can answer. Ako, ako personally, oh. I, I, um, I, I just want to start by saying, ako, I'm not worried about youth uh, creating content, whether it's too much or too little. Or I, I, I leave that to you. I mean, okay lang yun. Kanya, kanya yan. Di ba? Walang, walang basagan ng trip. If you're, if you're quiet, if you're, inter- if you're not the kind of person na, na tweet ng tweet and then post ng post ng, 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 ng political and so on that, 
that's fine. Hindi ko problema yun. Um, on the other hand, kung ikaw rin naman yung very vocal and you're always engaging, that's, that's fine too. I think the more important thing for me is yung before you speak, do you, do you understand, di ba? And there are other ways to engage. You can engage by asking questions, di ba? You don't have to take a position every single time. And actually, it's a very important skill and it's a very important value. You have to learn also to be vocal by way of asking questions and by way of showing that you know how to ask uh, questions. And there's no, uh, well, there are right and wrong, di ba? May mga behavior on how to ask, but you're free to ask. And then finally, I would be concerned more about the input than the output. Diba? Parang, parang ano, be open to many ideas. You have to try to listen very hard to what is this guy or this woman trying to say. Diba? Kasi immediately tayo, we have barriers. Eh. Pagka, lalo na pagka hindi na, pag, if we think we disagree, immediately the walls are up. But listening very hard and trying to understand is very important. And most importantly, having training yourself and and disciplining yourself to have some reliable sources on the other hand here's the thing you are your generation is more the expert on the technology and the platforms and how to use it but really our generation it, i wouldn't use the word expert pero kami we are more really anchored not on the technology but on the on the content behind it um, you've heard the term post-news, post-truth. We really came from that generation that it was really important to be able to say, ano ba yung, ano ba yung totoo muna bago ako magsasalita? And so the technology can be misused, the, the platform could be used, misused, and all your skills for amplifying voices could be misused if you don't concentrate first on, teka muna, do I read the news? Do I take time to really understand all the different sides and, and so on and so on? That's, that's my bigger concern rather than are you speaking up enough? I, mean, I think it's inevitable. You'll speak. You'll, you'll get there. If I, if I could add to that, no, I, I understand the hesitancy. No, and, I, and I agree with, with Robbie 110% in that I am hesitant to post anything if I am not confident about the information. Right, so knee-jerk reactions to certain things. I'll research. I'll find out more, and then I'll put myself out there. And I, and and if I am wrong, then I will admit it. Right. Um. And I and I think the challenge of the youth today, again, digital titos kame, um, is everything is documented. If you can imagine that Robbie and Voltaire, that yung prom outfit mo is searchable and you it's there forever, right? I mean, I wore polka dots and suspenders mm. na plaid. Thank mm. God there are no pictures. Mm. And lalo na all of the 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 in the, the opinions you posted back then. There, there's a track record of it. So I understand and I, I applaud taking a breath and being a little hesitant and trying to understand the topics before you put yourself out there. And when you do understand and you have an opinion, be open to, being, to having discussions about it, right? Having people question it. So I think it's really um, the hesitancy is because um, we lack confidence that what we're sharing is the truth. And that's a good way to nudge behavior, no? You will get better at sharing things, at speaking um, about your opinions, if you know that what you're sharing is a fact, that it's supported by evidence. So pwedeng maging approach, you know, in being vocal and active in social media, as long as it's evidence-based, Ano ka, hindi ka mahihit kasi you know that what you're saying is the truth, right? And okay. as long as you're open to other perspectives. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, while there is a, a single truth, there are many um, opinions or the ways of seeing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, Voltaire? Voltaire, naka-mute ka. 
function na yan actually ng campaigns, ng mga interventions ninyo. Kasi feeling ko nasa DNA ng mga kabataan o kahit sinong internet user yung mag-click, mag-share. Yan ang basic na behavior na mag-surf. Now, the, the challenge is to how do you intervene, how do you elevate yung ganong behavior to a level na that will jog them to action, to close the loop. Meaning after reading an article, listening to a podcast, or um, watching a video, uh, ano, yung, ano yung emotions doon na na-evoke at yung ba nag-inspire sa kanila na mag-engage beyond sharing? Kasi basic metrics man yun yung sharing at saka um, yung emoticon, etc. Pero yung challenge ngayon sa mga, I think sa, sa movements, sa NGOs, media, ay kung paano ma ma ta-transform mo yung ganung eagerness nila to engage online in terms of their um, online behavior pero yung mayroong ground action di ba na hindi lang na hindi lang na sustain doon sa sa online pero kung saan mas mahalaga yung kanilang interaction sa sa ground so more particular ibig sabihin ko um, when you create content parang purposive alam mo na yung agenda mo kung ikaw ay NGO isang 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 student isang leader or isang NG- development worker um alam mo na maraming content out there how do you make sure that one your content is factual that's based to yung motion that factor in fact bago yung lead ngayon mahalaga ang paano mo, mo sila ma- ma-attract through yung emotive na aspect ng iyong article how would it make your audience feel yung inyong article will it enrage them will it inspire them etc so yung emotional agenda mo in writing or in sharing uh, content and three um yung engagement niya hindi sapat na nag-share lang kundi lalo na pag NGO ka may camera kang objective to 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 inspire people to act you have to be very clear kung ano yung purpose ng iyong content would you like them to sign um Um, a signature or a campaign to be part of a signature campaign magrally magvote mag etc so anong action anong political action na gusto ninyo para clear yung yung mga bata may research ako nalalang na sa Rappler pa ako um, yung mga bata they are willing to 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 volunteer for instance volunteer pero gusto nila clear kung anong gusto mong ipagawa kasi busy sila ang dami nilang ginagawa sa internet sa kasusurf So, parang sinuspoon spoon feed mo. So, sometimes it's not only a function ng technology din, kung, kundi kung ano yung intervention mo, anong gusto mong ipagawa sa kanila, ano yung purpose mo sa pagpapakilos sa kanila. And then, finally, yung time. Kasi napak-real time yung engagement. So, dapat um, um, clear yung objective mo time-wise. Kung, kasi kung late na yung ano mo, response sa isang issue, for instance, dahil napaka-real time ng engagement online, minsan wala nang silbi. So, na, dapat um, relevant yung, yung content. So, to summarize, parang yung sasabi ko usually sa mga campus journalists na tinitrain namin, you, your content has to be grounded, my feet. Um, uh, ay, nakalimutan ko yung ethics. Yung, mahalaga yung ethics kasi yung, that, would, that would separate your content from other uh, typical content. You have to be responsible, you have to be humane, you have to be factual. I agree, Voltaire. You know, um, in my campus journalist days, and because I majored in journalism in college, um, what I do until now, I know it's very tedious, pero sinasabuhay ko yung triangulation, yung I need mm. to see this fact present in three reliable sources first mm. before I uh, justify that it's a fact. You know, because some... Um, mm. Marami din kasi yung um, dilemma ngayon with um, social news on news organizations on social media. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're reactive mm-hmm. din eh to what's trending. Mm-hmm. So you really need to um, validate your information. At least three sources. Three sources niya. Okay. Um, I wanted to... Na Matas na level yan ng engagement, um, ng politicization at education. Hindi, hindi lahat ganun yung mga bata na mag-verify ka ng tatlong Uh-oh. beses. The basis. So, minsan, malaki talaga yung role na lalo na yung mas conscious, na mas, na mas may tools at mas exposed sa ganitong discipline at may rigor ng fact-checking na talaga maging, mag, mag-create ng content that would, that would um, immediately address yung any disinformation across the board. 
Mm. Yeah, so mahalaga talaga ang media, especially in social media. And kasi ito nga, kaya nga natin ito tinatawag na fourth estate ng lipunan, di ba? Kasi um, sila yung, we should hold them accountable if in cases na they don't report, um, they report biased information or they report um, not a fact. or based on uh, trends yan without verifying as you said it's them we can we should be able to rely to them that's the i uh, that's the ideal scenario na itong mga media giants natin these are sources of information na pwede ninyong puntahan pwede ninyong i-visit in case you want to check information etc merong and community comment- media and community media of course of course Uh, meron ditong comment si Daniel Eva Nepales, which I like very much. Establish first that the point of having the conversation is to know what is right and not who is right. Okay. I like that. Okay. The challenge, ako, I'll go to uh, another topic that I wanted to ask your opinion about. Kasi some of the participants are also leaning towards that. Um... fact-checking information and putting out substantive some substantive insights are becoming more challenging because of the trolls and machinery na I would say ito yung kalaban ng mga fact-checkers at ng mga kabataan, ng mga digital titos and titas because there are so many, it's an entire, um, the architect of this information. Maraming mga, um, I would say, um, fact negators at may mga alternative truths na sobrang hirap i-combat. Especially kung kabataan ka, minsan maraming nababurn out na hindi naman ito makikinig, um, na inuulan ng trolls ang kanilang mga comments. Um, what would you advise, um, hindi lang sa youth, to everyone in the, in the advocacy space, um, paano ba natin mas combat yung ganitong type of the architect of this in the of information of this information and paano ba to paano ba ano bang pwede nating gawin in our own little ways to make sure that the dominant narratives are factual correct and are not biased so i mean from uh, let me take a micro perspective yung family ko um my parents raised us to be very disrespectful uh <laughs> Uh, irreverent and, and 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 question right so when they started you know uh being active online in social media uh we were the first to call them out and we were lucky because we outnumbered them that <laughs> and we're able to put constant pressure and be persistent right and also be empathetic Um, syempre, uh, it took time, but now we educated them with the tools as well. So first is really saying, hey, it's a long journey. It's not a consist, it's not, there's no single website that you can share. There's no single link and don't give up. So going to what Michaela said, I think it's kailangan nang talaga maging pers- persistent and respectful, right? Uh, do not immediately push people away. Do not react. First say, hey, why do you think this is true? And then you now start a discussion and try and find out. And it's cons- it's constant. It's a constant battle. I understand the, the point of being burnt out. But um, yeah, that's that's the only way. Ako, dagdag ko yung, ano, yung, yung kay Iba. Style din yan, di ba? Parang sa pamilya rin namin, may mga ganyan din. In fact, sa barkada ko, di ba? Parang ngayon, marirealize mo, ang dami palang tanga sa batchmate ko sa high school, di ba? Parang, di, parang dami palang, dami pala akong mga contemporaries na, na uto-uto, na gullible, and, and so on. And, but eh, tama si Iba, you, you start with a, with a gentle question of, eh, parang, why do you think that way? So you're, you're trying to show that you're not close. May dadagdag lang ako doon. There's a, another trick. This is literally a trick. You say, uh, after mo pakigan, sabi mo, uh, open ka ba sa isa pang perspektibo? Di ba? Are you okay with another perspective? Or hearing something nakakaiba? Di ba? 
And that's called an affirmative question because there's no way you're going to say no. Diba? Because if you say no, tapos na yung, uh, ikaw yung talo ka. Diba? So, it, and it, psychologically, it also opens up the other person to, to, to that. No? But the other thing I want to share is what, what Iba said. There's no silver bullet. There's no silver golden website. There's no single source. And even amongst ourselves, there's no such thing as, okay, how do we win the dominant narrative? There is, uh, right now, media is part of the problem. Right now, media is a victim um, and so on. And so in fighting disinformation, my only other advice would be, habaan nyo yung pasensya nyo at pagsinyo because you're all going to be parents and we're still going to be fighting this. And which means that the solution for your children um, is the solution we're looking for is probably too late for the May 2022 elections. Honestly, um, what we've been given right now, that's the environment that we will just have to take the results as best as we fight it. But we will take the results in May 2022, given a broken uh, system. That's just a reality. We will go through that. But therefore, the long-term and sustainable solution is not in media. It's not in journalists. And it is not in you, unfortunately. The long-term is really in the education system. We, we don't it's not about building foolproof media. It is about raising an information resilient population. And the only way we can make information resilient uh, people is by giving them a certain level of skepticism, giving them the skills on how to converse, how to talk, how to ask, how to question, and so on. Giving them a foundation of ano ba ang mga reliable news sources, how do you know, how to fact check. And you'll see those fruits, I think, if we start now with, with children, you'll see the fruits of that probably in 10 years, in, in, in 20 years. By the next elections, uh, by 2028, we'll start seeing the fruits of you mga 12 years old ngayon, 18 na sila by, ano, they'll be the new voters. Then you will see that. But the, the solution, even for me, honestly, is not in fact checking because fact checkers are losing to trolls anyway. And, and fact checkers don't understand the algorithms anyway, and so on. So the only way you can do it is, parang COVID. We will be living with 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 all of these health risks for the rest of our lives. We always have been, neba. Right? But it's about inoculation. It's about vaccinating yourself. It's about learning how to deal with with small threats first, so your body and your mind is 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 trained to deal with bigger issues as you grow older and as you grow bigger also. Thank you, Robbie. Um, it's, no, no, at the end of the day, it's a really a systemic thing. Sorry, Voltaire, go ahead. Yeah, um, that's what I did. I was starting with my family. I was successful to a certain extent. And then you zoom out. You go to the clan. Where is that? In the group of Facebook groups, sa Viber groups. There are a lot of people who are there fake news. Si Dia na fact check kasi hindi naman nakikita ng mga media, uh, mga private chats to. So, um doon magsimula ka doon. And then two, um kung mayroon kang um, community, mayroon kang member ka ng group, um yun empower your capacitate your group. I think mahalaga yung communities kasi that would help change or influence yung algorithm, conversation. Lalo na pag marami kayo. Kasi ang nangyayari ngayon, bold lang tayo if we talk in our respective echo chambers. Ang tapang-tapang natin. Pero tingnan mo yung mga iba. Yung sabi natin ibang groups. Hindi lang sila matapang sa kanilang among themselves. Matapang sila to. Kung simbang nag-challenge sila sa, ano, sa mga comment section ng media, um, talagang nag engage sila. So paano natin magagamit yung ganong yung organized forces kasi ang daming organized I assume organized to kasi um, youth led and it's a campaign so yun gamitin i-transform natin yung ating physical uh, fi yung 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 power natin physically yung group yung groups and then transform them into digital into into digital strength and engage them that's how that's how uh, that's one way to do it kasi otherwise sila lang mananalo di ba sila ang mag populate sila ang mag overwhelm ng platforms na ito so yun i encourage everyone to engage you um if not verified through if not if not through verified content 
ng news, create your own content. Kung hindi, you don't have to fact check kasi hindi naman lahat fact checkers. Yung basic lang na tools. And then, in- engage in meaningful conversations with your friends, family members, and communities. Uh, if I could add to what, mm. what uh, Voltaire just said, because it's very, very relevant today. Uh, I think uh, a week ago, uh, Facebook announced that they are lowering the impact of political content. So that means is if you're sharing political content, you're discussing political content, the algorithm will lower that, the, the uh, I know of that. Um, what happens now is that it will now, all of the disinformation will move to private channels. And they have been, right? They have been. If you share a link now on Facebook, you'll notice that an external link, it's not going to get the same kind of reach as something, a post of what you had for lunch, right? Uh, that will have more reach. But in those Viber groups, in those WhatsApp groups, in Messenger groups where there is no oversight, that's where it becomes a lot. That's where misinformation is starting, is growing now. Completely, yeah, completely, completely, yeah, uh, I completely agree. Yun talaga. I mean, in fact, when we say social media, don't forget, actually, at this point, we're talking about Viber, WhatsApp, Messenger, yep. even text. Mm. That's social media. That's what we're talking about. I, kasi, and, but, but to that point also, it also shows that, okay, Facebook, bababaan nila. It's, it's the other thing I keep saying, parang, you can't keep looking to Facebook and pressuring Facebook and saying, "Hoy, be better at policing the information and the content that we're posting." Facebook is part of the problem. I really don't think they're part of the solution at, at this point. And so I, I still will always keep going back to my point that the solution is in our education system. Uh, the solution is in how we raise the next generation to be skeptics, to be polite, yes, but to be constructive. But they have to they they have to learn in literally in schools. Like how did you learn uh, the difference between its and its, ne ba? Kasi pinagtawa nang kasi klasin ng mga klasi mo, ne ba? How did you learn your subject verb agreements, ne ba? Because you recited once, pinagtawa nang ka ng seatmate mo, and you got a wrong score pa sa quiz, ne ba? That's the only way. So it, it's the same thing when you start citing reports. Uh, from fake news, uh, from 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 unreliable sources in school, your teacher should sanction you. I thought I thought for a while, um, very very briefly, because I don't have the the discipline of of really of being a, a full time professor. But I thought for a while, you cite Wikipedia, and at that time, wala pang Facebook, wala pang ano. You quote Wikipedia once you get a failing grade with me, and even now there are people in this room who are asking each other, "Bakit? What's wrong with Wikipedia?" Diba? So, so, and that's Wikipedia. That's something that you know, I've seen lawyers cite. I've seen journalists cite. I've seen um, legislators, uh, in, in, in legislators <laughs> news organizations. And that's just Wikipedia. Diba? And you have to go through that, what we all went through, of getting a failing grade, being marked wrong, being laughed out of the class, kanchawang ka ng mga klase mo habang bata ka, para magtanda ka. Dahil magtatanda ka rin, what are the, where are you rewarded naman? When you know how to make an argument, when you know what to cite, when you have a good foundation of what is reliable and what is not, and when you have all of these skills innate in you. And that can only come through long-term education, not just for yourselves, but for our entire education system. Naku, lalo na kasi ngayon yung textbook at saka yung kahit peer-reviewed information ay challenge na under attack. In fact, may mga teachers mismo akong classmates na talagang ang grabe mag-post ng mga um, disinformation sa kanilang Facebook. Um, at sila nagsasabi ng mga tinuro nila o ang tinuturo nila ay mali if just to to legitimize or to support their their candidates. Um, lalo na dito sa late, alam niyo yung context na sinasabi ko. So parang ka- tayo mismo, if um, sa tingin natin, for instance, uh, mali yung information, say, yung history part ng history na yon if the, a fragment of history has been um, revised, do, so you correct it kaagad, right there and then. Ako yung ginagawa ko sa, sa, sa alumni ano namin, 
chat group. Naku, ang dami nagmamagaling, pati mga teachers. But you have to immediately challenge kung sa tingin pa, kaysa na kumalat pa. Kasi naniniwala ka agad yung iba eh. Iba yung emotional na effect sa kanila. So that, that, that goes a lot deeper, Voltaire. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I read recently that it's not just us. Right, we are not mm. unique in the United States. Mm. There was a teacher mm. who taught their class that Trump was still president. Oh my god! <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so we are not unique in this. Um, mm. And again, yeah, it is. It comes down to persistence. It comes down to learning. Mm. But on the flip side, and I, I'm asking, I want, I would love to ask, get the insights of the professionals here, Voltaire and Robbie. How do you explain, there's a certain level of skepticism and there's too much skepticism, right? You have the flat earthers. You have uh, people who are skeptical of, of um, mask mandates or vaccines, mm-hmm. right? What are your thoughts on that? The problem is we're all trying to do our, we're all trying to wrap our hands around it, right? And it actually goes beyond journalism. Eh? It goes beyond uh, communication. It goes into psychology. Diba? Parang I've, I've seen posts that say that actually it's not facts that will convince somebody. Because if it were, diba? we will all be lining up for vaccination. So obviously it's not, it's not facts. Eh? It's on a deeper emotional level. Unfortunately, you know, we will need to bring in psychologists um mm. and 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 mental scientists to mm. to help us understand the wirings mm. but i think the key point in that insight is that it's also on an emotional level mm. people's also are you know pagkaharapin mo bigla mong binara eh, defenses mm. are up diba I, I that much i can relate with diba and and so pagka yung tita ko halimbawa nagpost ng fake news Ako personally hindi ko na hindi ko na ako magkaiba tayo ng style vote eh. hindi ko binabara sa family groups kasi 'di ba parang ang daming dynamics doon eh basta nakakatanda sa atin yan pagpasensya mo na lang yan. alam ko naman yung sentiment ng majority sa amin 'di ba uh, pagkatapos year one din baka mapahiya lang si tita or si tito 'di ba so okay, eh, okay, effect but the, sa mga inuman uh, the point is i guess it's it's much more it's much more, ano, and, and unfortunately, I think, I don't know if there's such a thing as a mass strategy for this, eh? diba? or if it's really just one-on-one, and ano, in which case, wala, parang, I don't know, I guess the answer is, I, I, I really don't know also, but it, it's multidisciplinary, obviously, it takes more mm-hmm. than us, and we, even journalists and media, we're, that's actually an important thing to acknowledge, that we're just a small part, we're just one part. Um, of a very, very big problem. You know, I, I have that same experience with titas, right? And at, at, and and every day, I mean, not every day, but when you see something, right? That's it. Should I do something? I always say it comes from a point of, a place of love, right? And, yeah. and, and I will do something. But if I mean it, then I'll say, you know, I'm sorry. And then I'll, I'll kind of ease back the tension. But I'll always have some kind of resistance. I don't know. <laughs> mm. sad actually, ano eh, parang ano lang siya na amplify lang ng social media actually yung level ng politicization ng education ng lipunan natin um, kaya nga yung sinasabi tama ka rin na mahirap mag-engage lagi sa social media in fact yung ibang mas effective na pag influence ay sa mga informal na gatherings kasi tama nga kayo may pinanggagalingan eh yung empowerment Ngayon mula maaramdaman na feeling sila empowered. para nakaganti sila. Parang matagal na kami sinasabing bobo. Matagal na kami sinasabing nasa backseat kami ganyan. Ngayon, whether tama o hindi, naka-identify sila sa mga sa mga naririnig nila. So, parang halimbawa yung mga classmates, inuman nga nangyari eh. Parang yung pag-convince namin sa isang maling information or fact ng fragment ng history. Um, dahan-dahan eh, hanggang malasing, doon lang sila na-convince kahit papano. Na kung ano yung mali, ano yung tama, dandan. But then, part pa rin yun ng ano nila. For the longest time, wala, wala disempowered sila. Wala silang tool. Ngayon na mayroon na silang tool. At in fact, wala nang control yung media doon. Um, yung gatekeepers, ano ng information. So ngayon, parang uh, laban na sila. Regardless, it doesn't matter kung tama o hindi. 
basta they made their point and they feel empowered mas mas powerful sila online i think also we we, we keep asking ano bang magagawa natin dito sa platforms kasi doon natin nakikita yung problema mm-hmm. but actually the problem is it predated um, mm-hmm. the platform So you you look at for example revisionist uh, histories uh, people who would deny um, the impacts of martial law and so on mm. and just because nakikita niyo yung debate sa mga, mga chat groups doesn't mean mm. that's a chat group lang biglang umusbong yan and so i i mm. tend to believe the the theories it's hard to document but that's probably really something that needs to be documented down the line that the, the changing of the narratives whether it's martial law or the holocaust in germany and and so on that really were started to be seeded very very patiently very mm-hmm. very you know over years probably over decades uh, diba and and infiltrating our education systems infiltrating textbooks um, um getting to to teachers um and, and so on so uh, the point is hindi porket yung yung platforms sa pinag-uusapan natin ngayon na nasa platforms din yung yung solusyon. Um, uh, yeah, I really think it it we have to look beyond the platforms and and, and try to understand how our minds shaped and it, it takes so so many things. Just to add to that uh, discussion, no? um, one of the I guess um, interesting points of the results of our youth survey on Who influences their vote? 54% said na it's based on the endorsement of their family. So that that's considered a majority. And then share ko na din sa inyo yung highlights. Only 29% said na they rely on political experts. Um, 24% said that president, the president is the basis on who they are voting. 19% said traditional media, 19% said community leaders or elders, and 18% said close friends or peers. This is uh, very interesting and quite shocking actually that at the end of the day, hindi media, hindi, um, hindi platforms ang pinagbabasehan kung paano nagde-decide ang youth, but it's really the, the people surrounding you. But to consider then, the, the, the survey was conducted at the height of the pandemic and wala ka talagang ibang makaka-interact. No? So family talaga is really, it, it's the, family it's the is first everything. player. Yeah. And to that question, we also asked them, so if that influences who you wanted to vote, who then influences your stance on political issues? And then 59% said that they still will look to their family as a guide for their stance on political issues and then 57% naman said they will still look at their family for guide kung ano yung mga susuportahan nilang policies and activities that's interesting family means what family means elders mm-hmm. family means uh, parents nuclear uh, family it, well, hindi namin nuclear. na specify mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. actually ganyan din dito eh dito OFWs kasi sa amin halimbawa kung sino may economic power kung sino ang traditional na center ng family, tatay, or kung OFW ka, sila yung nagdedetermine dito. Kasi um, dito yung flow, makikita mo yung flow ng information. Masyadong engage yung isang OFW sa isang group. Tapos yun, ipatransfer niya yan sa iba't ibang group. So ulit-ulit hmm. niya sabihin yung kanya ang sinasabi sa group na yun hanggang sa family chats. Um, so uh, parang ganun yung flow ng information. Um, hmm. At... Kaya nga, at, at actually hindi siya masyadong bago. Kasi ganun din yung behavior ng, ng kahit product, di ba? Kung mag-post ka sa Facebook mo, um, kahit ngayon matatunin yung mga advertisers, mas authentic yung mas authentic kung family member or friend yung nagpo-post kaysa isang, isang influencer or isang artista. Kaya marami ng advertisers na ngayon na gusto na mas authentic yung engagement. So siguro yung isang sinasabi noon, in the same way na... Um, ikabroadcaster ka na eh, sa Facebook mo pala o sa Instagram mo or anumang platform mo. Mayroon kang friends. Sa immediate community mo, sa immediate network mo, you can in fact influence kung ano yung, kung ano yung magiging perspective ng yung mga followers. In the same way, kung post ka ng shampoo or sabon, sabon ay yung mga, yung mga marites mong kapitbahay at family members at mga ng mga gitero ng gitera, malamang bibili at mag-aano rin yan, mag-aattempt na bumili, di ba? Dahil pinost mo. 
you really need to look around, you know. Because it at the end of the day, while well, fact um is still ideally it it's what should influence our stance on things. Meron ka pa ring psychological and cultural consideration eh ng mm. yeah, nang sinabi mo kung sino yung mga around you, kung sino yung mga nagte-testify on this factual information, um malaking factor din yon. And that just um re-echoes what we want what we all were saying kanina na be persistent na you can syempre pwede kang sumuko minsan kung talagang mm. Pagod ka na. Okay, sige, rest. Pero there is something worth um, pursuing. And, and don't burn that bridge, right? Yeah, oh, oh. Don't, don't Don't cut off. Don't push it to the point na ano, sila bumigay, di ba? Okay. Um, we only have, unfortunately, just a few minutes left. So parang as a closing message, um, um, following all our very rich conversations on uh, the architect, of disinformation, the cultural psychological impact, um, ano yung pwede natin gawin. Um, what is your, I would say, message to the Filipino youth na maybe hindi active, uh, maybe passive, or dun sa mga active naman ngayon? Ano pa yung gusto nyong reminder as the digital titos? Ano po ang gusto nyong i-relay sa ating mga kabataan ngayon? Um, if, if I could start na. Um, first off, um, we're sorry <laughs> for, for uh, <laughs> passing this world to you. Uh, our, I, I think my, my childhood was what much, much, much better than yours <laughs> because there's no documentation. Um, and, and the world was flat when I was young. I was round, was round when I was young. Uh, the, the second thing is that um, I think it's, it's, it's very telling that it's family. No? I think that that's very Filipino. Because pag may bagyo, kung nasunugan ka, kung nawalan ka ng trabaho, kung may nagka-COVID, sino rin yung magsasupport sa'yo? Yung gobyerno? Hindi. Yung pamilya, di ba? So... The fact that uh, family is key is, is, is who you have to win over. And if you are going to use the tools that we're talking about, persistency, empathy, uh, and, and teaching, they're the, they're the people that you can convert, right? The, your mom, your tito, your siblings, they're the ones that you can educate. And, and finally, thank you. Um, because the fact that you're here, means that you are arming yourselves with this kind of education, that you want to make a difference. And nakaka, I mean, that, that, that inspires me more than anything. Thank you, Iba. Robbie? Yeah. Uh, Sorry ka rin, Robbie. Ha? Wala ko kinalaman dyan. No, I... I uh, Ang, ang sa akin is that uh, uh, at saka iba hindi natin ka-generation si Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> uh, we're just victims here. We're just we're victims, victims as well. Uh, no, but I, I, I think what I would always just emphasize and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a parent now. My, my children are in college. My daughter just graduated. So uh, I want to speak on that level also. I, I tell them, look, uh, you, you know, parang you worry about yourself, di ba? Worry about what you can control, di ba? Can you control the narrative on a national level? You cannot, di ba? It, you, it, it's really not something that should keep you up at night. It makes you wonder what role can I play in the in the big uh, problem. But if 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 the role you're playing is not enough to change the entire Uh, of everything that's wrong in this in this country, that's not what should keep you up at night. What should keep you up at night is, am, am I playing my role? Uh, am I using the gifts that I have? And am I protecting myself? Am I being resilient? It's easy to judge other people when you say, you know, I, you know like I said kanina, parang, eh, dami palang, dami palang egot na na batchmates ko, ngayon ko lang nalalaman, matatanda na kami. Ngayon pa kami nagkabistuhan kung sino pala yung mga hindi nag-iisip. 
Diba? But it's easy, it's easy to judge. But the reality is, at the end of the day, I have to ask myself, what about me? Am I being fair? Am I also given to my own biases? Diba? Uh, when I ask my friends who are in fact-checking organizations and fact-checking activities, I go, you know, I have a problem with fact-checking uh, activities because the reality is you have your political biases also. Eh? It's a political decision kung sino if a fact-check mo. Diba? And then, and then so, so, so you have to constantly worry about yourself, make yourself information resilient, try to um, have that open and constructive conversation with the people in your sphere of influence and so on. You will try to expand that sphere of influence as well, but there are best practices for that uh, also without bringing down the entire chat group na binuo ng batchmate mo for 10 years pagkatapos akala mo ito lang isang itong isang troll lang yung bumubuwag yung pala it's the fact na ikaw ang lakas mo mga bara tapos kayong dalawa na lang yung nag-uusap doon di ba i you can all you can all relate di ba you've left some chat groups because merong mga mas maiingay sa inyo and one of them may be right one of them may be wrong but at the end of the day it's those two people that brought down the entire chat group di ba so Uh, in in everything, I'll just recap my main points. Is I would still encourage you to worry about yourself first. Are you reading the news? Let's be honest. Are you reading the news? Do you have a base of reliable uh, go tos? And are you questioning those also? Um, and then you worry about everything else um, and 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 the other people around you because at the end of the day, it takes much much more than just pressuring Facebook or 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 uh, or calling out any particular source it's a it's a huge huge problem and it begins with you being resilient and if you can learn how to be resilient and hopefully we can all teach each other how to be resilient how to be constructive how to have how to have this conversation which um, your titos can now tell you by the way it will never end you'll still be talking about uh, all of these problems pag-iiba lang yung anyo but you'll have these problems when you're when your parents also thanks Robbie Voltaire you're on mute Voltaire din pa isip din ako kasi pag story na ipapublish talaga ang kakaririn mo i-verify mo bago mo i-publish sa official platform pero kung individual na lang ikaw na lang Um, walang pressure sa iyo na mag-post para minsan nakakatamad or minsan ayong mag-engage nga kasi kailangan mong pang mag-research o trabaho, di ba? So in other words, hindi ganun yung pag-iisip ng karamihan sa atin. But then, you're all student leaders, I assume, may respective um, communities kayo. Um, start harnessing, harnessing that community. Um, that means, kung may mga old ways kayo of doing things, try to inject a few new things sa inyong workflows. Um, sa inyong campaigns. Ako dating aktivista, may mga dati kaming gawi ng pag-i-inform, pag-i-educate, placards dati, megaphone, etc. Um, pero ngayon, pwede maging tool pa rin yung social media despite its disadvantages. Pwede siya pa rin maging tool para mag-educate at mag-influence. Use that. And if you have access to gadgets and if you can create content, you create content and then embrace your form. Huwag mong problema yung, yung polish ng yung content. Embrace the form you're comfortable with. Embrace your form and form your content. Yun ang mas mahalaga. Um, tayo ay magsaliksik para mas meaningful at mas insightful at factual yung ating sinishare online sa ating immediate community, sa ating immediate network. That way, I think we can be um, youth leaders um, who are also st- storytellers. Thank you so much, Voltaire, Robbie, and Iba. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat. Sabi nga po nilang tatlo, have empathy, be persistent and resilient, and start with your own community.